everybody, what's going on and welcome back. So today we are going to continue part two to Star Wars, what makes it great and what went wrong. Obviously what went wrong will be part three, but we're getting into part two and part two consists of the prequels. Now, there's a lot of people that have said over the years, and especially when they first came out, how much they couldn't stand the prequels for one reason or another. But let's break it down, starting with the first one, The Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace starts off, and we get a look at Qui-Gon Jinn and a younger Obi-Wan Kenobi. And... The thing I I really found interesting about Qui-Gon is Qui-Gon is actually very representative of that almost ideal Jedi. He is the Jedi that he listens to the Force. He pays attention to the Force, you know? He is more in tune with it than a lot of the other Jedi that you see throughout prequel films. Now, why do I say that? Everything he does is he constantly talks throughout this movie about how he listens to the will of the Force and that the Force brought him to that planet for a reason. Him meeting Anakin was no accident. And then people say, oh, well, he used the Force to cheat at the game with Watto, you know, over that roll of the dice. You know, uh, well, you know what? If he already believes that the Force led him there for a reason, he probably believes that the Force wants him to do this in order to accomplish what they consider to be a paramount goal. But we're kind of getting off topic from the beginning of the movie. So obviously the beginning of the movie starts off with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan going to a Trade Federation blockade and trying to negotiate a deal on behalf of Naboo. And this leads into the differences, obviously, of course, between people like Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. Many of the other Jedi, such as somebody like Anakin or Ahsoka. I mean, you could see the huge difference in the way he thinks and how he reacts to things. He is not overly headstrong and he does not rush into things as we see Anakin do later on. Or even Luke, for that matter. In the original trilogy. He is very thoughtful to everything he does. But yet, once again, he obeys the will of the Force. And he lets it lead him to where he needs to be. And what makes Qui-Gon an incredibly interesting character. And I would say the ideal Jedi. Is you you look back on what Obi-Wan had told Luke. When he was training him. He told him a Jedi uses the Force. He allows the Force to flow through him. So Luke says, so it controls my actions. And Obi-Wan corrects him and said, partially, but it also obeys your commands. Yoda also instructs Luke in the same fashion. A Jedi can feel the force flowing through him. Yoda also talks about how a Jedi would become so great with the force as his ally. But getting back to Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. So, negotiations don't go as planned. They wind up on Naboo. They escape from the Droid Federation assault troops, which leads them to the Queen. Obviously, after their detour through the Gungan City and then meeting up with Jar Jar, which, you know, I, I didn't really care much for the Jar Jar character. He was what he was. He was comedic. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I, I wasn't a huge fan of him. But it is what it is. So then they leave and then they have problems. And of course they touch down on Tatooine. And that's when he meets Anakin. And of course you know the Force had, the force had led him to him. And then we get Darth Maul. Now Darth Maul for me was one of the highlights of this movie. I really liked the character. I liked the way he looked. I liked the way he moved. He had that extremely heavy martial arts style of fighting. That was incredibly interesting. And Ray Park, who originally only started off as a stuntman, but George was so impressed at his skills that he he wound up making him the character of Darth Maul. So as everything progresses, and of course you get to the final fight scene in the end, you know, when Darth Maul kills Qui-Gon in a very emotional scene, and you know, it's almost like a coming of age for Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan outthinks Maul. Because Maul is just so, (laughs) 
he's just so overconfident that he allows Obi-Wan to outthink him and to take him out. So those are all the things I liked about it. So what didn't I really like? Well, I, I really I really didn't care much for all the Gungan battle scenes. Why why they let it they they gave you a different spin on things, and I mean, I guess they were okay in that aspect. I, they didn't do nothing for me, and I could have did without them. 90% of the time when I rewatch this movie, I will fast forward past those scenes. Also, the little fight scenes that Padme and her troops have in the throne, the you know, the palace rather, uh, I, you know, they, were, they were boring to me too. I don't know. I, I just did not find them interesting. And even the space battle scenes with Anakin piloting the ship like it's a pod pod racer. I didn't care for that. So that leads into the pod racing. <sighs> While it had its moments and it was kind of neat, I mean, I thought it was just overplayed. It was just too much screen time for it. I mean, if it was shortened a little bit less, I, maybe I, it wouldn't have irritated me quite so much. I, I did not care for it. And I know there's a lot of people who talk about how much they love the pod racing scene. It, uh, it just, it did nothing for me. Nothing at all. I mean, I think actually if they had focused more on dialogue between Palpatine as Darth Sidious and Maul, I think that would have been a lot more interesting. I don't know why they didn't. They should have. A little bit more intrigue, you know, a little bit more backstory of them because they were so interesting. And I mean, it's just... You know, it is what it is. I mean, they showed Maul and you, they got you interested in his character and they gave you really very little of him. And I, I felt it was a wasted opportunity. So getting into the next one, let's get into Attack of the Clones. It starts off pretty good. You get the whole thing with the bounty hunters, you know, Jango Fett destroying Zam Wessel. You know, that whole chase scene, That was it was okay. I mean, it wasn't great. It was okay. I really like the cantina scene. I mean, that was absolutely hilarious. And it's, a, it's always one of the standout quotes that you get when people think of Attack of Clones. <laughs> hey, buddy, you want to you want to buy some debt sticks? I mean, who doesn't know that line? It's it's good stuff. I, I really, really also like some of the stuff with uh, Kamino and Obi-Wan there talking with them and his interaction with Jango Fett. And then, of course, his little bit of a skirmish with Jango Fett. I really like that stuff. I thought it was really cool. I like the whole idea of a planet that's like mostly water and it's constantly raining all the time. I thought that was cool. It was a different type of world. Damn sure it wasn't another freaking desert planet. That's for sure. The big fight scene at the end. Yeah, you know, it definitely had its moments. The, the whole love scene stuff with Anakin and Padme. I mean, uh, you know, I realize that they're moving the plot of him and her together forward, but it was just, I don't know, I found it extremely boring. The whole thing with him and the sand people. And that was one other thing I want to touch on. I, you know, the whole thing that a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, well, Anakin just descended in the last one right down to the dark side awfully fast, and it was a quick turn. Well, no, it wasn't. You look at the first one that I just got done talking about. Yoda even says in there, he could sense much fear in him. And some of the things that Anakin does throughout that film even as a child they're very like dark side leaning his flirtation with with Padme and, and just so many other things that he says and that he does they're very they're very self-centered which is is a dark side trait so then you get into Attack of the Clones and what does Anakin do Anakin slays all those sand people after having dreams of his mother dying Further descending to the dark side. There are there are many things throughout this movie that are great lead-ins to what's going to happen next. And then there's some other some of the other stuff like the whole the whole part where he's like fighting the Geonosians before they're captured and tied up for that little mini arena fight with those creatures. I mean, it, that was kind of boring too. I mean, there was a lot of stuff in there. It was just it was throwaway. And I think that's part of the reason why so many people hate it so much. But, I mean, that very end battle scene with all the Jedi in that arena. And then, of course, the fight with Dooku. I thought those were all great. And a lot of people gripe about Yoda being able to flip around. Well, you know what? He was a little bit younger then. He was also extremely powerful in the Force. He wasn't like, I guess he wasn't feeling disconnected like he was in Dagobah. It would stand to reason that he would be able to do a lot more then 
than he was able to do later on. So let's get into the last one and Revenge of the Sith. Now, by far, I don't think there's too many people that are going to argue the fact that Revenge of the Sith was incredible. It was the best of the prequel trilogy. By far, everything leads up to Anakin becoming Darth Vader throughout this movie. There are so many little things that he says and that he does throughout the movie. It shows his descent to the dark side. It shows him having very self-centered thoughts. And everything is what he wants to happen. Things that he refuses to let happen. He's going to find a way. These are all very dark thoughts. They're all self-centered. And then, of course, to the point where he winds up stopping Mace window by cutting off his hand. I mean, let's not even forget about what happens in the beginning of the movie when he takes off Dooku's head. That was all him. The Emperor, you know, or Senator Palpatine, he was a friend of his and, you know, but he wasn't controlling him by any means. He wasn't his master at that point. That was just straight up Anakin deciding himself that he wanted to take Dooku out. And what did he say directly after? I shouldn't have done that. It's not the Jedi way. He was already descending to darkness. This was no quick jump. This wasn't a quick fall. This was descending over the course of three movies in the prequels. And everybody missed out on that. And everybody bashed George Lucas. And it is no wonder that George Lucas decided he wanted to sell the franchise. He felt betrayed by the people he thought he was making a movie for them to explain how they got to the point. That happened in the original trilogy. That's all he wanted to do. And everybody beat him up over it. And he had enough and he he sold it off. I mean, granted, he didn't actually sell the movies per se off. I mean, I talked about this before. He actually sold the company and all its subsidiary companies off, which, of course, included the IPs for the Star, Star Wars franchise. But that's a whole different topic. If you want to see my video on that, you can check it out. There wasn't a lot in this movie that I did not like. I thought all of it was pretty damn good. Even even the fight scene between him and Obi-Wan, you know, I, I mean, maybe maybe some things could have been done a little bit different. Maybe they could have been done better. But for the most part, it, it was a very good fight. And it led in to everything. I mean, even the point where he was choking Padme on that landing bay. It was all showing where he went. How he becomes... Darth Vader that we knew from the original trilogy. I don't know, guys. I mean, I'd like to know your thoughts. If you like what I said about this, go ahead, hit the like button, and please, please leave me some comments. Even if you disagree with me, come on, drop those comments for me. I'd love to see them. I want to read them. I want to reply to you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, and I will catch you all Next time. Later, y'all.